Hello friends, here I am out in my garden and I would like to say welcome to you and to my channel Rocky Mountain Gardens. So today I am doing my very last garden tour for the season. Today we're going to be looking at late blooming flowers that you might want to consider for your garden if you like that continuation of some color in your garden later into the fall. So it's September now and here in Colorado we're never sure when we're going to have our first freeze. So in order to ensure that you get to see what's blooming in my garden right now, we're going to do the tour today. Now let's take a look at my overall garden and its condition at this late time in the summer, and then we'll do some close-ups. I brought you out here to my front yard so I could share with you this beautiful tree. It is called a European mountain ash. Mountain ashes are not part of the ash family that the emerald green ash borer is ruining and killing trees in the eastern part of our country. So you don't have to worry about that pest. But oh my goodness, in the spring, and that's when I took this video, are abundance of these beautiful white blooms. And they just really make the spring look bright. I hope you like the springtime look of this tree. Next, I will be showing you a clip that I did very recently of this same tree now in the late summer and you can see in this clip that this tree has more than just one season of interest. I'd like to share with you this wonderful European mountain ash. I planted it here when I first moved into my house back in 1997 and it was quite small only about as tall as me I'm 5'7 and now look at the height it has gotten in these past years so let me come up close and show you the berries that grow on this fabulous tree these are wonderful food for the birds and they really scarf them up quickly. I had to get out here and capture the berries before they were all eaten up. <laughs> yes, and I do love feeding my birdies. And let me show you close up the beautiful leaves that are on this tree. So you have a leaf with many leaflets on it. You might want to consider adding this to your garden if you have the space for it. You can see it is not a dwarf tree. It does get quite, quite large. But oh my, it adds such interest to your garden. Now we're in my backyard and we're looking around. Uh, I'm standing on my back porch to give you this view. And our second view will be from the back of the yard where I was earlier sitting in my little swing. So I'll play some music as you enjoy the view.
So here is a really lovely plant that you can always count on for fall colors. And it's called Autumn Joy. It is in the sedum family. And guys, you can see here one of the blooms starting, which is still green. Later, they turn this luscious pink color. And if you're not aware of this, then even later in the fall, they become burgundy in color. So they are wonderful uh, fall plants that you can always trust that they will be blooming and looking gorgeous in your garden late in the summer. I was hoping to capture these pretty rose lilies uh, for you in the late summer and they have begun to bloom. They had buds for quite a while, but as you can see, they are exhibiting this browning on the petals. I've seen this in the past couple of years as I have grown them. I think they've been planted about three or four years ago. So I'm really disappointed in the way they look because I do like Asiatic lilies and these rose lilies are supposed to have many more petals with them to give that appearance of a, a blooming rose. So if you have any tips about what causes the browning of these petals, I sure would appreciate you dropping something down below in the comments of this video. And I would love to have some help. So. Thanks in advance. I wanted to capture these tall garden flocks that you see here that are just beautiful, beautiful blooms. Take a look at them close up. Tall garden flocks is something that can be grown in cold climates and is simply gorgeous like a hydrangea but for those of us who cannot grow hydrangeas in our uh, USDA zone, this is an alternate that you can be sure to have really good luck with and enjoy this beauty at the end of the summer. Aren't they spectacular? They almost look like hydrangeas, but they aren't. And the only caveat I would ask you to be sure of if you're shopping for tall garden flocks is to look for ones that are mildew resistant because that can be a problem with this plant. And good luck growing this fabulous late summer bloomer. My crop of sunflowers has been rather disappointing also. So I grew these from seed um, early in the spring indoors and then transplanted them to the outside. I do have a couple of pretty blooms such as this one right here. That one is just perfect, don't you think? And then I have a different color of sunflower. Let me grab the bloom here. Isn't that gorgeous? But they seem rather flimsy and unable to stand up on their own. They just fall back. So I'm quite disappointed. I wish more of them had grown and survived the transplanting. So maybe next year I'll try again. Here's a view of a rather unkempt part of my garden <laughs> where I allow the rose campion that you see here and black-eyed Susans to reseed each summer. So I never cut them back. I let them go to seed. I have a lot of luck getting a nice patch of these beautiful black-eyed Susans that really speak to me in the fall. Don't you agree? And then of course, these bright pink rose campions as well.
All right, friends, let's talk about this native plant, which is called Joe Pie Weed. Now, I actually planted two little two and a half inch pots here in this area about 10 years ago. And I've showcased this plant in my garden tours in the past, sometimes when they were just babies sprouting up in the springtime. But as you can see by August, it is in full bloom and it is as tall as my fence or taller. It is a really gorgeous plant. It does spread, as you can see, from my two tiny plants initially. But if you have a large area or an ugly fence that you'd like to disguise, this is a fantastic plant to use in your backyard. So I highly recommend it. And because it's a native, it does attract our pollinators quite a bit. I get quite a few butterflies on it. Not any at the moment, but I've seen many landing on this plant for nectar. And like I said, I encourage you to give it a try. I hope you enjoyed seeing Joe Pie Weed. Now right here you can see one of my asters. I'll put the name of this up on the uh, screen for you. It is one of the longest blooming asters in the, the aster family. It blooms, I would say, two or three weeks. You will see these pretty purple flowers brightening up your garden here in the fall. And I'm going to walk over in this bright sunny day to see this sort of peach colored ice plant blooming happily in the full sun time. They do like to open their blooms in the sun and close them in the evening. This is a great ground cover. Now here is another type of aster and I don't know the particular variety because I got a couple of pieces of it from a friend of mine who's also a gardener. I planted one piece here in another over in another section of my garden. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that it seems to be, or the stems seem to have been sort of beaten down by heavy rain and hail. Normally they stand up very straight and tall, but look at the deep purple color in these asters, aren't they delightful? Thank you all very much for coming by my channel and sticking with my garden tour till the very end. I hope you have a very blessed weekend, my friends, and hope to see you again as we move into the fall. Bye for now.